Hello, welcome to Weekly Prayer. Today we're going to look at words of Jesus that are perhaps more relevant than ever they were. They certainly carry the power and the force that they did when he spoke them. But first of all, let's start with prayer and then get into the words of Jesus. Lord, be with us as we look at your word. May we see your truth in it, and may we understand you, and be able to relate these words to our lives today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, the reading comes from Matthew 5, verse 38 to the end. That's Matthew 5, 38 to the end. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you. And do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your only brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Quite a long reading for this, but sometimes it's good to have the whole context. It was Gandhi that said, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. But I've often thought, and I, I genuinely believe, that Gandhi was sort of re, re, reinterpreting these words. On many occasions he showed himself to know Christian scriptures very well indeed. And of course, an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth leaves the whole world blind and unable to eat. You can't keep doing that. And I remember when I was very young saying to my granddad that this was really important to me at that point. I was thinking about sports and war and all the sorts of things that young boys think about. And he said to me, oh, don't worry about it, Paul. You only have two cheeks. You've only got to take one slap. He was wrong, that's not what it means. What it means is we keep turning the other cheek. Otherwise, loving your enemy and praying for those who persecute you would be fairly meaningless. It's a philosophy that marked Christianity out as very different. I'm not actually sure that many of us have succeeded in carrying out Jesus' wish with this. And I think perhaps we should have tried harder, or should try harder. When you think of all the wars in the world, how many of these conflicts would have been solved just right at the beginning? people had both, on both sides, had been willing to say, all this is going to do is lead to destruction, let's find a better way forward. So often, people are not prepared to actually truly negotiate. And then it goes on about the one mile, if you're asked to walk one mile, go two. In Roman times, you could be forced to walk a mile 
to carry a soldier's equipment for a mile. And he's saying that as a Christian, impress them, go the extra mile. And what that means in terms of peace and and kindness to people is that sometimes we're going to have to go the extra mile and actually it's going to be costly. It's going to hurt. If a soldier wasn't willing to carry it and he wanted you to carry it, it was going to be heavy. <coughs> I'm sorry. So today, let us think, how can we go the extra mile? What would happen in world politics if we could vote for politicians that might go the extra mile? I find the verse there that says, give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you somewhat harder. Like everybody else, I've been brought up to believe that you don't help a beggar by giving them money. I'm not always sure that's true. And I am convinced of the fact that perhaps sometimes what we should be doing is giving people food or shelter. I have yet to find homeless people that have chosen to be homeless as a lifestyle choice. I have found people whose mental health or poverty has forced them onto the streets. And I have spent a little time talking to people that are homeless. I did quite a lot of work at one point at the YMCA. And I would have to say to you, we need to go the extra mile for these people but perhaps we may want to give to organisations that will help them. But that's perhaps a debate for another time. Right now, I want us to think about just giving that little bit extra in terms of thought of how we bring peace in circumstances we find ourselves. Let's pray. Lord, it is so hard to be a peacemaker when those around us are intent on conflict. It's easy for us to be dragged into conflict. But I do wonder, Lord, how much better place the world would be if instead of demanding our pound of flesh, we tried to meet the other's needs. Help us to meet the needs of the others. <coughs> and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I do hope you have a great week and that everything goes well for you. God bless you.